Hey fellas, how you doing? You would not believe how fucking how quiet it is out here. I'm out on my walk. I just stopped. There's nobody on either side of the road. Two lanes this way, two lanes coming the other way. There is nobody. Uh, except for me. <laughs> I just wanted to uh talk while I was out here doing my walk Marty not quite at the halfway point but I'm getting ready to mount one of the hills eh, an incline a slow incline till I get to my turnaround point um, <clears throat> I think one of the best things you can do for yourself as a young man middle-aged man or as an old man 59 for me here is to figure out the things that you have control over in your life and then take control of those things. Um, it's as simple, can be as simple as whether or not you decide to exercise, whether or not you decide to eat right, whether or not you develop, you work on good habits and try to minimize your bad habits staying in shape eating right being on time keeping your word getting drunk getting fucked up getting in fights causing trouble all the time feeling sorry for yourself for some of the bad habits those are bad habits the good habits were in the front now this isn't a great segue <coughs> But I want to talk about it. I was at the uh, club last night for a while just to talk to a couple guys. I don't drink, but what I'll have, I'll sit at the bar with them or sit in the back room where they can smoke their cigars. And I'll have a club soda with a lime because I don't drink anymore. I don't drink alcohol. I drink water <laughs> and other stuff like that, but not beer or alcohol, anything with alcohol because it's a bad habit of mine and it turns me into a raging asshole so anyways i get in there and uh el paso has a uh, military base called fort bliss and they have uh, combat units here but one of the things it's kind of infamous for is having the Sergeant Majors Academy that is the E9 that is the top of the line for the enlisted ranks and there are different type of skill sets that can be promoted to E9 now you can have a guy who was in the accounting office and is a sergeant major in charge of I don't know a battalion <clears throat> I think, yeah, I think battalion is where they put the sergeant majors at the beginning. I'm just talking about the army. So anyways, and then you have sergeant majors that were in the army who were tier one fucking killers. And I'm talking about the guys who were in Delta Force, like the fucking Grim Reaper. <laughs> guys like... I believe Tim Kennedy, um, Sergeant Major McPhee is who I knew him. I knew him in the Middle East. He was not sure, but I think they call him Shrek. And I tell you what, that dude is a fucking, that guy can shoot. Anyway, what I'm saying is that even though you're both Sergeant Majors, there's levels to these things and there are a ton of seals now I think they have either six companies of them or six battalions of them and that's a, if they're battalions they're they're massive so but there's levels to that too and then there's a guy one of my uh, favorite people even though he was in the Navy and there's just a rivalry wow that's the first car i've seen 
going the opposite way. Anyways, <clears throat> uh, I like him because I just like the way he carries himself. His name is Sean Ryan. He has a channel here on YouTube. And what I'm getting at is that now I, I, let me let me qualify my point before I say anything. Wow, what the fuck is that? Oh, nah, nothing. What is that? There's somebody sitting in the road right down there. Do you see those headlights off on the oncoming way? The car's just sitting there. It was flashing its lights on and off. Anyways, man, I pay attention to all that shit, so I'll keep a, another car is moving. So, but it's not moving fast at all. Let me go ahead and I got my gun. Anyways, acting creepy when there's a lot of people around is no big deal. Acting creepy when it's just me out here. That could be a bad sign. <laughs> the car changed. I mean, turned the corner. It's not there anymore. So, back to the story. So, anyways. Uh, all of these teams and groups and all of that kind of stuff. Um, the only ones that I know of when I was in that had EOD support in special operations was the Navy SEALs and the EOD badge that I have, the Master EOD badge. I have, let me tag this. All right, let me get underneath this thing. And you can see they're building the wall. Can't see the pool anymore. Well, they have their uh, EOD guys embedded in them. And back in the 80s, 1980s, not the 1880s, uh, our operations groups, uh, 3 7th was down where I was at in Southern Command. Uh, they didn't have EOD guys. Now, they have demolition guys, but those guys are normally uh, of the engineering class. They're not of the up to speed on booby traps. And uh, EOD guys in the Army are up to speed usually if they're good and, they're import and, they're, and their craft is important to them. They're up to speed from everything from a nuclear weapon on down. Now, I've always been good with booby traps, um, whether they're mechanical. Uh, I, I don't I don't keep track of that stuff any at, at the time. But uh, during that time, I was uh, it was kind of the guy, and I was in great shape. I think I had 10% body fat. I think I had like a 29-inch waist. Them days are gone. <laughs> anyway, so I get, uh, they put me on a string. They, uh, back then we had pagers. I had this long, long ass Motorola pager. And they called me into the unit on a Friday. And they said, hey, you're like one of our only single guys. Uh, and we need you to hang around the unit this weekend. So that if something happens, we intend to send you and in the uh, EOD unit you keep a, a locker with uh, different with clothes and so they enclose in a go bag and stuff like that just in case you need to get out and go do something there's a, a person not just this car there's a person down there walking up there I think it's the lady with all of the dogs so when we get close to her so I don't freak her out from this distance I look small but when you get closer to people I tend to look a little bit I'll just move over here to the street so she doesn't have to worry about me so <clears throat> anyways so I'm on a string and this is my first encounters with the uh, Tupac Amaru and the Sendero Luminoso out of Peru but at the time I didn't know anything about them Good morning, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Beautiful weather. It is. Anyways, um, what I was talking about is, uh, so 
what, what I didn't know at the time, and I'm just giving you the background information. So, so anyways, I'm watching, I think it was The Untouchables with uh, Kevin Costner. And then I get the pager goes off, and it all it says is return to the unit immediately. So I go screaming into the unit, and they gave me, uh, I can't remember, they're called uh, travel orders. I'm not, not sure what they are, but I had a, a blanket travel order, which would says worldwide mobility on it. And they gave me that, and they took me over to Howard Air Force Base. When I get over to Howard Air Force Base, there's probably, I don't know, 30 guys over there. Only a total of 15 of us went, and I was the uh, 16th guy. 15 of them and one of me. And <clears throat> the rest of the guys were supporting logistics and making sure you had enough food, fuel, and stuff. That's the first time. <clears throat> I used to keep my uh, identification tags around my neck and one of the things because I'm an outsider to these guys and these guys are tier one now I looked the part big guy 6'2 thin good shape but they don't know me from anybody you know I'm just some fucking dickhead that has to come along with them or they can't go and uh, so anyways I had my ID tags around there first words out of the mount and I see a, a full bird colonel out there which is abnormal for me because in my detachments we only had a captain and there's a lieutenant colonel a bunch of majors running around and they're all talking to the guys they're giving them the speech it's like when um, you're deployed to a country with a uh, your unit and your unit's a battalion, let's say a mechanized infantry battalion. Third ID. <clears throat> I was attached to those guys for a while in the Middle East. And you wake up and the uh, mobile kitchen unit, MKT, is there in front of your battalion. It, they've been up since like 2 o'clock in the morning cooking, making eggs and steaks and all that kind of stuff. And the chaplain's there and all there. And they're all telling you, congratulations, gentlemen, this is it, we're going in. No, no, no. Now, none of those motherfuckers are going with you. But at least they're there making sure you get a hot meal. So anytime you're deployed in the military and they show up, everybody shows up for a grip and grin is what I call it. And to give you a, a meal, <laughs> you know, you know something's up. So anyways, there's all these guys running around. The first thing I got fucking told when they let me out... Back then we had a, God, it looked like a, a Ford Bronco, a big Ford Bronco. And the guys from my unit, so senior guy that went with me was a master sergeant. And at that point in time, I was a staff sergeant. First thing they did is to get out of the vehicle with my bag and five guys come over. First thing out of the mouth, don't fucking salute anybody while you're here. And then they, they called me cherry <laughs> anyway I don't, know, I don't know who the fuck you are da, 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 da. and they take my bag from me which was an Alice pack which is a rucksack what I call a large rucksack large rucksack and they just start going through it and they're throwing my shit out on the fucking tarmac and when I bent down to try to grab my I bend over like this to try to no that's the moon and back to grab my to grab my uh uh, rucksack from the guy who was going through my shit one of the other guys grabs me by the shoulder pulls me back turns me around and tells me to take my fucking ID tags off and I'm like what and at that point in time he made me loop them around one of the belt loops on my right side and stick both ID tags into my pocket so they didn't make noise and I must have spent probably a good three straight minutes jumping up and down with just my shit on like this jump there making me jump up and down like this just to make sure I didn't make too much noise and geez sorry about that I think I woke the bird up and after that when I put my ruck on and the water and the rest of that shit my ruck was a lot heavier now because it was anyway 
and I'm fucking jumping up and down so I didn't make noise. And I don't know why that stuck with me. So anyways, we get on the fucking uh, C-130 and the fucking crew chiefs, oh, you fucking guys got guns, you go fucking man. We all had guns. I mean, they were, anyways. So my first M24 sniper rifle up close and personal. Anyway, but they wouldn't fucking talk to me. Uh, they didn't want to get to know me. They didn't want to hear my fucking story. So I just I was trying to be stoic. I was trying to be, you know, I was quiet. You know, what's up? I didn't say anything. Nobody was trying to make eye contact with me or anything. Well, I'll have to close my story off. So anyways, I'm almost at the point where I have to go up the hill and I don't like doing anything except concentrating on getting up that hill. So what we ended up doing is they uh, had broken into the Sendero Luminoso, which is a shining path. Those are mouse gorillas in uh, Peru. And we were going to go assist <laughs> the uh, country. And we went to the mill. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> but they had uh, broken into and stolen a bunch of dynamite and blasting caps and the rest of that kind of stuff. And uh, that was where they needed me. But anyways, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit while I was out here doing this. I'm slowing down here. Make the corner. Love you guys. Um, you have way more control over things than people want you to believe. I think it's just as important for you to... I'm hiding from these guys so they can't see me until they go by. Too close. So, anyways. Develop your good habits. You have a lot more control of things than anybody wants you to believe. I'm here at my turnaround point. Other than that lady, that's the only other person I've seen. Uh, except for a few cars. I think that's a total of one, with the one that turned down there. Uh, one that one drove by. So that's a total of four cars. Uh, love you guys. Stay safe and healthy. Take care of each other if you can. And if you can't, you take care of yourselves. Like a fart in a G-string. From West Texas, El Paso. I'm out of here. And gentlemen, there are levels to everything. So, um, give yourself a break. Anyways, that's enough for me. Bye-bye.